This is a technical video where we will do the step by step on how to configure a SonicWall switch. So we'll start by the beginning, which is registering the switch on my SonicWall, then update the firmware, and we'll move on to configure all this. So we'll do plenty of tag and untag VLAN, and we'll also do link aggregation. Our firewall is already pre-configured with plenty of interfaces, so we'll bring all this to the switch, which means we will create a fair amount of VLAN on it. And also, we'll do some VoIP setup, because a classic VoIP setup is to have the workstation connected to the phone and the phone connected to the switch. So we'll configure the switch that way, and then connect the phone and actually test it out. But first, as I mentioned, we'll talk about many VLAN tag and untag, and I do speak to a fair amount of people during my day that don't really know what VLAN are, or they just go like, uh huh, yep, uh -huh, sure, VLAN, yep. But you can clearly say and see in their face that they don't know what it is. So maybe you know, but I'm sure at one point in your life you didn't know how VLAN worked and what was the concept of tag and untag and those type of thing. So we'll cover this first. So let's say you are the IT guy that work in a very small shop. You start with a unmanaged switch and a sonic wall firewall on top. And of course you connect those things. So X zero, in the unmanaged switch and off you go. Then you connect all the different workstation and stuff in there. But then you watch my video about uh, network segregation and you want, okay, well, I should separate things. So I do have a um, camera system that has been bought because it was the cheapest one. And it is a brand of camera that don't even have a website. So I trust you know that there are no security whatsoever in there. So you followed my recommendation about network segregation and created another interface on the firewall. We'll take blue here. So you picked X4 and connected that to another switch where you do have other camera stuff connected to here. So we do have whatever camera stuff and you connect that here. So now you have two switches. Moving on, you realize, hey, um, the company has grown and we have the production assembly now and everything is automated in there and there is plenty of machines so that should never ever stop it will be very expensive if that stop and they're currently connected there with everyone so you're just like well i'll create another interface on my firewall and we'll do again more network segregation to ensure that the camera doesn't have access to the assembly line and that users don't have access to it either so less stuff can go wrong right so what you do, you take another interface, X3 in that case, and you find another switch you had laying around. And yeah, that one, uh, you didn't add the power cable, so you just uh, drill a hole and weld this on the board, right? Because, you know, it works. So here we go. And your stuff for the assembly line is now here, right? Isn't it amazing? So you got three different network, the black network for users, blue network for camera and white network for the assembly line. So the business is growing. You got security all done. And then you realize that uh, the backbone of your business is that thing, right? Nothing super impressive in terms of reliability. Those are the cheapest switch I could found. I could find some are used with stuff welded on them. Some are stuff I found on Amazon for about the same price as a Big Mac. So it is not the most stable or reliable setup ever. So what you want, what you think you can move on is a true manage switch that is business grade and will most likely be much more rel reliable on the long run. But that means you need to understand VLAN, right? That's where we're getting at. So let me just disconnect everything. So now we're here with still our firewall with our three networks. We'll call it the black, white, and blue network. And now we want to do those three switch in there. So there are there is one thing in that part of VLAN is to create different VLAN on the switch. 
So that is pretty much the same as cutting your switch in three blocks, right? So you can say from port one to let's say seven, that will be my first switch. So we can go in the, in the switch and say one to seven is switch ID number one or switch black, right? And then I can say, you know what, from eight to 12, that will be network white. And from 12 or 13 to 24, that is going to be my blue network. So if we go in our switch and create different VLAN and we say one to seven is VLAN or switch, right? That's pretty much like cutting again your switch into three different physical switch. So switch number one, that is port one to seven is switch one and uh, seven to 12 is switch number two and 13 to 24 is switch number three. So that is called creating untag VLAN because the packet, each packet that goes in, right? I got my laptop connected here, then it goes here. So the traffic when it comes in or out does not have to be tagged. It's just internal to the switch. It knows that this is one switch, that's another switch, and that's another switch. So something on port two will never ever be able to talk to something on port 20 because the switch knows that those are separate. They are not the same switch, the same VLAN. So that is the most basic part of VLANing, cutting your switch into different blocks. Block one, block two, block three, VLAN one, VLAN two, VLAN three. There are over 4,000 VLAN ID you can use, so you can create plenty if you want. So that is on tag VLAN or native VLAN, that means that the VLAN setting is really inside the switch and doesn't go belong the switch, right? It doesn't reach out to anywhere else. So that means that here, if I'm saying this port 13 to 24 is VLAN 30, well, here on the firewall, I do not need to tell VLAN 30 because it's untagged. So the firewall is not aware that the switch is cut into three different switches. It has no clue about it and there is no single configuration to do whatsoever on the firewall because now I move to three independent switches to one physical switch that I've cut in three. Then you may have heard about VLAN tagging or trunking. So the best way I can bring this to a simple Example is like Wi-Fi network, right? When I have my access point, my, my access point and my phone, and my neighbor also has Wi-Fi, everyone around has Wi-Fi. Well, we all use the same media to transmit information. That's air, right? So we send Wi-Fi waves throughout the air. So my access point, my phone send waves in the air. It, it goes everywhere by six different neighbors will see them but only my access point will answer um, or deal with my traffic. Everybody else will just ignore me. It's simply because the packet my phone is sending on the wireless as a Wi-Fi tag. It says, oh, it's for this wireless network, JP's home Wi-Fi. That's so my, only my access point will receive this and say, oh yeah, GP, JP's home Wi-Fi, that's me. And my neighbor, Stefan, his access point will be like, that's not for me. I'm waiting for Stefan Wi-Fi. And every time I send traffic, his access point see my traffic, but just ignore it because it doesn't have the tag of its own traffic. Only my access point will say, oh, that's for me. So that's the same for uh, VLAN tagging. So every packet that goes on the cable will be tagged. And the most common reason to do this is when you have when you want to have multiple networks sharing that same media that cable right so here take for example i have three different on tag vlan i've cut my switch in three but here i want to use one of the fiber channel on the switch and go 20 kilometers further away to reach out another building i have well if I have three networks here and I want all three to be on the other side, I can take three SFPs and just say SFP 25 is on VLAN black, SMP, SFP 26 is on VLAN white, and SFP 27 is on VLAN blue, right? Or whatever number I've put. And then I have the three going on the other side and again, not deal with VLAN. But I'm sure you understand going three fibers for 20 kilometers will be much more expensive than just running one, right? So you may want to say 
port 25 is going to be my uplink going to another switch and I want it to carry on the same cable. Well, it's not a fiber, you get it. That would be here. Can I put, yeah, so like this. So um, it will be this that SFP port 25 going to the other switch, but I want that one port 25 to carry black, blue, uh, and white, right? So then you will tag those VLAN. So at, on, I have my SFP25 here and my switch will add a VLAN tag for every packet. So it will be, oh, that's VLAN blue, VLAN black, or VLAN white. So it's gonna send that traffic. So each packet will have a tag added to them saying that's network blue or that's network white. And then it will reach the other end of the cable the other switch has to also be configured to understand and expect packet to arrive with a tag of black, white, or blue. And then it can go on other ports and be on tag again, right? You don't need to follow the tagging all the way, right? It has to work on both ends. So if you do VLAN tagging here, you need to do VLAN tagging there. But when it gets to other port or other switch port, you can decide to remove the tag. So here again, my port 25, I could have traffic coming in from 20 kilometers away, arriving here, being tagged on VLAN blue, and my switch will be like, oh yeah, I know, okay, got it, that's VLAN blue, I'm gonna remove the tag and let it go on those 12 port that I have here that are set as VLAN blue, right? So that is called VLAN tagging. So step-by-step -step configuration of the SonicWall switch. So right now the switch is unboxed and on the table over there and that's it. So first thing we need to do is to register the switch. So go cloud.sonicwall.com. Many were going to mysonicwall.com, that still works. I just like cloud.sonicwall.com because that's also contain my sonic wall and we'll also have the man the cloud management interface for the switch cloud.sonicwall.com log in with your my sonic wall credentials then here i do i did create a tenant for this youtube video and as you can see there are no product registered uh, then i'll click on my sonic wall to go register um, the switch so as you can see, I said that I had no product. Yes, I do have the TZ470, but I do not have it licensed to be managed in the cloud. That's where, that's why all tiles were grayed out. But if you want, you could have, click that small arrow and here have managed cloud management of your firewall or firewalls and switches and AP and all other product. But in that case, I will keep the firewall management local and I will use cloud management for the switch. So I am into my YouTube tenant. I do have many tenants here. I will click on register product to add the switch. So enter serial number. Well, first pick the tenant. In my case, I want the switch in my YouTube tenant. Authentication code and a friendly name, which will be a switch. Switch, that's friendly enough. Choose management, and here you do have two options. You can manage the switch from the firewall or from the cloud. Personally, I will go with cloud because that's the option I prefer the most. The only reason, it's not because firewall management does not work, it does, it's just that if you change your firewall for a bigger model, right? Here I have a 470, but let's say your business grow and you need a 670 or a NSA 2700, it, you, if you have to migrate your firewall for a bigger model, but the firewall also manage your switch, well, that's one more thing to worry the, during the migration, right? So if it's managed through the cloud, well, it has nothing to do with the firewall, which makes management and migration uh, much easier. So today I'll cover cloud management for the switch. And then we see you know, serial number and all plenty of information. I could, if I want, change the name for something that means something more than just a switch. I could change the management from cloud to firewall if I want. I do see when my licenses expire. Uh, if I, when they are about to expire, you renew them, you go here to type in your renewal key and you get firmware in there as well. So let's close this. So now my switch is registered. So click that small little arrow, and then click on wireless network manager here. So that's where we will manage 
wireless access point in the next video and our switch. So dashboard, I will cover that later. I'll spend more time when I will cover the access point in the next video. But for now, let's move on to network and device. And as you can see, I have no access point, no customer, but you'll be like, well, I have no switches. So either you can be patient for things to sync up, but if you're like me, you're not patient and you want it to work now, you go into general and to settings, general and it start syncing here. So it's gonna sync, usually pretty quick. Then you go into a device again, and my switch is there. See here, something else you'll be like, well, I thought it was a managed switch and it shows unmanaged. Yes, because switches in SonicWall can be managed in bulk. For instance, if you have a big organization and you need 20 switches for everything VoIP, then you can create a group called VoIP and have some switch policies and switch configuration while well, you'll manage all those switches in bulk. And you may have uh, server room switches where they will have different settings and end user switch and you know whatever it is. So we do have different groups. So in order for the switch to show as manage and being well, it will show offline because it's still not powered on. But you need to move that switch to a group. So let's go into those menu here. So under network, we got network hierarchy. Here, that's where you could, if you want, create multiple groups. So see here, my default location, I can change it, right? If you do have multiple offices as well, you may want to uh, create those different offices and those different zones that are into those location and manage hundreds of switches. But here, that's a basic step-by-step -step for uh, the switch. So we're, we're not gonna go into those uh, details where you manage many switches. Well, first, because I only have one. Um, next. Here, see edit location. It is right now in Vancouver, so you can put it somewhere else. Let's do Toronto. Toronto, and it's gonna move. Well, it's gonna find Toronto. Here it is, that's Toronto. So, hit okay, and now it's in Toronto, right? So it's kinda nice, right? Your switch is at the right place. Toronto, Toronto, here. Um, next, if we edit the zone, the default zone, edit this. Then we can add access point and switches into that zone. See, we can give it a name, description, location, that's done. Access point policy, next video. Switch policy, here, see, we do have policies here and under that we have switch policy, that's where you can manage switches in bulk. To say those 20 switches, I want them to all have that setting. So you would add all your 20 switches into a certain zone where then you apply, for instance, let's say I talk about uh, end user switches and here we'll connect a laptop to the phone, the phone to the switch, which is a, which is a very common setup. So you could have, you can name this zone uh, end user switches and uh, set a specific policy, which I'll show you in a minute, which will set all the ports for all the switch the same way. So port let's say from port 1 to 12 will be all set the same way for every single switch that you add into this zone. So first thing we'll do is to add my switch into that zone. So click on the plus sign, we see a switch and we select the switch and click on add. See, my switch is offline because well, it's powered off right now. So. If remember here, I was saying switch policy and we have the default switch policy where we could have multiple of them where we can set switches in bulk. I'll show you that right now. So click OK. Then go into policy and switch policy. So we can add some if you want, but here I'll just edit the one in there. So see here I can apply setting in bulk to all the switches I've added to that zone, right? Because that's my switch config policy. Here I can decide the name of the switch, uh, the name of the policy, uh, change admin password for local management of the switch, decide if I want the firmware to be updated automatically every Saturday at midnight, SNMP setting, management VLAN uh, system, there is plenty of uh, settings here, spanning three protocol, uh, link layer discovery protocol, voice VLAN, QoS, 
IGM PDA, GPDA, GP Relay, Loopback Detection, Jumbo Frame, Multicast, 802.11ax, Static Route, Denial of Denial, Services, Radius, Mirror Report, and blah, blah, blah. There is a fair amount of settings uh, in those switches that you can work with. See here, ports. Well, Sonic will have multiple model of switches. So we have a eight port P, uh, a, a eight port switch, eight port PoE, a ten port full PoE, twenty four no PoE, twenty four full PoE. That's the one I have here. Forty eight, forty eight full PoE. So you could go here. So to say, every single switches that I have that are the twenty four full PoE port. Here is the setting I want for general for VLAN QS blah 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 blah. So then all the switches you've added to a group that is tied to that policy will receive all those settings. Same goes for link aggregation, again, based on the switch model and same for VLAN. So I could say add a VLAN and put this port tag and untag. We will play with those, but directly on the switch rather than going through uh, the switch config. So again, just to recap everything you set here, this is a switch policy and it's called default switch policy. Then if you go into here, edit your default zone, we have all the switches in case, in my case I have one and see I have applied the default switch policy. So if you have 100 switch and you want 20 to be tied to a specific policy that we just looked at, you just add those 20 switches to be part of that zone. So then they will be managed in bulk. Now let's go into devices, switch, and we see my switch is offline. So let me just power on that switch. So while the switch is booting, by default, all the ports are on tag on VLAN 1. So that's my laptop. I'll plug it into any port and I'll pick it up link. I'll say my X, <clears throat> X0 is on port 1. So that will also provide internet access to my switch because keep in mind, the switch is managed through the cloud. So the switch need to be able to, to reach out to the said cloud, right? So my laptop is again, all the ports by default are on tag VLAN one, which is something very standard for switches. I've never seen switches being configured differently by default. So my laptop connected here, then Port one on the switch, I've plugged it into X zero of the firewall. So that will provide internet access to my switch and my laptop will also uh, have internet access. Next, we will do different VLAN. We'll just follow the diagram I showed you we would do. And see, my switch is now online. As you can note here, see, IP it receive is into the 10.10.9 subnet. If we look at my diagram again, that's obviously X zero because that's where we've connected the firewall, uh, the switch, right? The switch was connected to X zero and my laptop is also connected to X zero. And if we look at the IP I got, I'm on 10.10.9, right? So, so far, nothing very exciting. We've, uh, we have the same config as a unmanaged switch right now because we haven't set anything. It's one flat VLAN, everything is the same. First thing you do with any with anything, update the firmware. So see if I put my mouse over the switch here, I do have this showing up and I can update the firmware. So we'll look at the one I have. I know I have updated that firmware before, um, so I don't know if it's current or not. We'll find out. So as you can see, it's running 12005 and if i check for firmware the latest is 12005 so i am up to date if you're not well of course just click upgrade and it will upgrade the firmware of your switch of course it will reboot and then come back to life with the latest firmware so let's go into the configuration of that switch because remember i showed you through uh, switch policy how the configuration looks like to manage switches in bulk but if you go here and hit configure on a given switch, the UI is pretty much exactly the same. So see here, I can, instead of being the policy name, it's the switch name, right? Uh, and here, for instance, let's say I do not like the fact that uh, the firmware of the switch will update on their own on Saturday night. I can turn that off and see inheritance 
ear is now off. So everything that you've set into the um, the, the switch policy, inherit on the switch itself, but you can turn off inheritance like I did here for auto update of the firmware. I could do the same. We will do the same in a few minutes about the management VLAN. Because if you remember in diagram, I want I've created a given a specific interface, a network uh, for management, where I will put management of the firewall, management of the switch, management of the access point, management, let's say, of my VMware server and things like this. So here we do have again all the other settings I showed you. Uh, then we have ports and all the different things about, you know, giving them a uh, description. You know, the thing that we never ever do. And then six months down the road, we're just like, hey, what's connected on port 16? Then we go here, port 16, general usage. Oh yeah, I should have put something. So that's where you put something. So you don't come up with, ah, oh, I should have done it, do it. Just document what you've done, right? Uh, VLAN and all the same thing are here. So link aggregation will do that maybe in 10, 15 minutes. In VLAN, that's where we will configure our VLAN. So first one I will do, remember I wanted a management VLAN. So in my diagram here, I said that I wanted port two to be my uplink to the firewall and port nine and 10 to also be part of this. So I'll click on add VLAN edit this. In my diagram, I said I wanted this to be VLAN 10. Give it a name that means something. And here I do have tag and on tag. So here for management, I want port 2 because port 2 of the switch will be my uplink going to X2 on my firewall. Then I want port 9 and 10 on my switch. So here what I've done, hit that small floppy disk to save. So now I have two switches, right? Switch ID number one is pretty much all the port, except two, nine, and 10, right? It's from one, from port one, it's port one, three, three to eight, and so forth. So pretty much all the port except the one I have here. And I have a second switch, switch ID number 10, that has port two, nine, and 10. So it's a small, tiny switch of three ports. So let's, let's save that, connect our uplink to the firewall and connect my laptop to port 10, right? So I'll go back here. I'll show you something nice on uh, the UI. You can preview your VLAN. See here, VLAN, show me VLAN 10. And I have two that are, well, gray, but a darker gray. So two, nine, and 10. So what I'll do, I'll connect the firewall here and I'll connect my laptop in uh, nine or 10, right? So let's go do that. So here I wanted my port two, so port two of my switch to go into X2 of the firewall. And my laptop was on port 13, which was connecting to X0. And I want it to be on my sort of second switch. So I'll connect it on port 9. So port 9 and 10 and 2 are on one tiny three port switch. So now going to the internet will be my laptop is here. I will be on my three port switch, which is port 2, 9 and 10. I will do a broadcast to get an IP address. And that broadcast will only be sent to port 9, 10, and 2. And port 2 is my firewall. Firewall is set for DHCP. It will answer my DHCP broadcast and provide me a IP address. So let's go see on the firewall or on my laptop what IP I got. IP config and I got a, an IP in 10, 10, 10 which is what I expected. If we look at my diagram, X2 is set as 10, 10, 10. So actually let's go see that firewall. So network interface and see I'm on X2, which is 10, 10, 10. 
So, we've got one VLAN done. Remember one thing I said, I want a isolated network for the management interface of my access point, my switch, my firewall, and whatever other servers I may have, right? Like the management interface of VMware or anything else. So my switch fall into this. So let's go into the config of my switch again and go into general and all the way down, see here management VLAN. So by default, it is on VLAN one. And if I close this, we look at the IP 10.10.9, which is in line uh, with X0, right? Right, Because again, I have two switches, virtual switches sort of thing. And one is the one I'm connected to, the tiny three port switch I have. And VLAN one is the other switch with, with every other port, which is on 10.10.9 with the firewall. So I want my switch to be on the management VLAN and in, in this in my VLAN settings, which I'll show you in a second, my second switch, which is the management VLAN is VLAN ID number 10. And I do want my switch to be on VLAN 10. See here, that's my management VLAN VLAN 10, which is my tiny switch and everything else is on VLAN one. So switch management is on VLAN one and therefore connected to point zero in the firewall, which is the IP 1010 .10 So here I will change it for VLAN 10 and see inheritance went off. So something to keep in mind, the cloud, the, the switch is cloud manage. So you need to make sure that when the switch will come back to VLAN 10, it has the ability to reach out to the internet to reach out to the cloud. Otherwise you lost management of your switch. So here we tested that it works, right? I am on VLAN 10, I'm connected on port nine and I have been able to reach out to the internet. So the switch should be able to reach out to the internet as well. Second point here, see the, the switch is on DHCP. And to me at first I kept my old habit of doing IT for 20 plus years saying, well, I need to put a fixed IP on my switch. Like, no, I don't. Because remember many like decades ago, we had our Excel spreadsheet with all the different switches we had in the, the IP address. They had, and that was the only way we had to manage our switch. So we put them fixed IP so we know how to reach out to each of them. But now we don't reach out to them in command line doing Telnet anymore. We just manage them through the cloud. So how much do I care about what IP address the switch has? It's on a dedicated management VLAN. And if I want to reach out to my switch, I go to cloud.sonicwall.com and they're all there. So I don't need a fixed IP on my switch. So to me, that's what I do. I just let them be DHCP and I really don't care what IP it has. And I think it makes management easy because if I say you're in VLAN 10 and you have this IP address, well, if you screw up, you forgot DHCP or anything, it might be more complicated. So I personally leave them DHCP because they are on, again, their own isolated network. So VLAN 10 and save that. So again, here note, it's still on 10, 10, 9. So we'll give, give it a minute and it will come back being on 10, 10, 10. And see now my switch is on 10, 10, 10. So management have moved, the management of the switch has moved to my management VLAN and the switch still shows as online. So next let's do one more VLAN. See here I have my X4 on the firewall that I want to be my warehouse where I have, let's say a, a warehouse with people with wireless barcode scanner. And I'm a strong believer of network segregation. So, I do have the warehouse on a different network than my users because if HR clicks a resume that turned out to be infected and you don't have proper email security, well, yes, the line will be infected, but the warehouse will keep going. So shipping and receiving of goods and billing should continue to work because they're on a different network and they cannot talk to each other. So in the firewall, I do have X4, which I'll show you. See here X4, I've called it warehouse and it's the, some, the IP 1010 100. So let's configure this on my switch as well. See, I 
in my diagram, I wanted X4 to be connected to port 4 of my firewall. And also I wanted 11 and 12 to be part of my warehouse because let's pretend I need a um, database server for barcode thing, right? Whatever it is. So let's edit my switch again. Go under VLAN, click on add a VLAN and say I um, wanted uh, VLAN 100, right? Where else? VLAN 100. Warehouse. I have nothing to be tagged on this. Uh, I will when we will have access point. Uh, so we'll do that in a minute. Um, the configuration of the VLAN, not the config of the access point, right? So untag. I want my uplink to the firewall, which is port 4 on my switch. Then I want uh, 11 and 12 on my switch. So again, I've created a tiny little switch. And now I have three switches, three virtual switches in my physical switch. So one switch that has the ID 100, that is port 11, uh, 4, 11 and 12. And another switch, which has the, the, the ID 10, is port 2, 9 and 10. And switch ID number 1, that has everything else. And also my wireless that I will do in the next video, the I will have a wireless SSID for the warehouse, right? Those wireless barcode scanner, they will connect to the access point and I want them to be on that network. So it will be tagged and it's from port five to eight. So five, six, seven, eight will be the four access point I will connect and it's gonna be a uh, tag because Remember what I explained at the beginning, the wireless barcode scanner will send wireless traffic. That wireless traffic will be tagged as I'm connecting to the uh, warehouse SSID. So the access point receive traffic tag as warehouse. It will then send that traffic on the network cable and it will tag VLAN 100 for that warehouse wireless traffic. So the switch will need to be configured the same way where, where it will uh, expect something on VLAN 100. So here I'm saying port 5 through 8, uh, expect tag traffic on VLAN 100 and hit save. And talking about this, I just realized I forgot uh, my management. So the management of the access point will need to be there as well. So I need to add them. So 528, actually 5, yeah, like this. So port 2, is on tag that's my uplink for my management port then 528 will be my access point and remember that's the management vlan the access point they will boot they will do a dhcp request on the on tag uh, and send that on tag so that's will that will be the management interface of my aps right and then it's save of course i could have done it better right five through nine right let's do, let, let's keep it that way it will be easier to understand so now I do have another VLAN add. So I got my VLAN 100 and it's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven port switch, switch, right? I got three ports that are untagged and four ports that are tagged for my switch ID 100. So again, let's connect uh, the firewall on port four and I'll connect my access, my, my laptop on port 11. Okay, so let's do port four of my switch on port four of the firewall and move my laptop from port nine to port 11. And let's see what IP I got. Yes, you need to hit okay so it saves the settings important point that explain why I got an IP in 10.10.9 because I haven't saved so port 11 was still part of VLAN 1. And I got 10, 10, 100. So, so far, so good. So for now, if we go into VLAN, 
I like that. See here, VLAN 1, I can see all the port, VLAN 10. So that's my tiny switch for VLAN 10 and VLAN 100. And we see which one are tagged, right? So VLAN 100, that small little T stand for tag. So I know that I'm currently on VLAN 11 and firewall is on, uh, on port 11 and firewall is on port 4 for VLAN 100. So that is, I think, pretty handy to find out a quick view what are your VLAN settings on the switch. So we've done VLAN uh, 100, we've done VLAN uh, 10 as well. So let's keep going and add some more. So I'm not gonna test each one of them, right? We've done two, we tested both, they work. So we'll just create the other VLAN I needed here. So let's add another VLAN. So the first one I have for X0, I want that on the firewall to be my VLAN. Uh, I wanted to switch to this to be VLAN 9 and it's the assembly, assembly line and it is on tag on port 1 on the switch and it will go let's say to port 28 which is a SFP port let's say the, the assembly line is far away and you have a, it has a local switch whatever it is right it's just for creating VLANs to show you how it's done. So we have VLAN 9, 10 is done, 200 will be for my guest Wi-Fi. So let's add a VLAN. VLAN 200 is guest Wi-Fi. So tag VLAN is just for my access point, right? So my access point will send tag traffic on port five and eight, and the uplink to the firewall will be on X3 on the firewall, which I will connect on port three of my firewall. So we'll save that. Next one, um, so we've done nine, 10, 100, 200. So let's save this. Okay, so now we've done simple VLAN tagging. So next step is the part where we have the laptop connected to the phone, the phone connected to the switch. From the switch, we go out with the link aggregation going to my firewall, right? So let's start with setting up the firewall. Right, I'm on a different VLAN, so that IP doesn't answer anymore. I'm on 100. Let's hope I have management on and I don't. So I'll just move to another VLAN where I can manage the firewall. Okay, so I just moved my laptop from port 11 to port uh, nine. So here I just need to hit refresh. So it will eventually refresh, will take maybe a second. Um, and I'm now on port And I'm now on port uh, nine. It refresh will take a bit more time, I guess. And that port nine is on my management VLAN and management is 10, 10, 10, which I guess is where I was before. Yep, so we'll log back in. So what I want to set now is my X6 and 7 with a untagged port for laptops and a tag VLAN for VoIP. So let's set X6, that will be untagged because it, it's just the direct interface, right? So edit this, make it on the LAN and my diagram, I wanted to have 101010 10.90.1. I'll turn on management and ping. Usually users, I like that they don't have access to manage the firewall, but just for demo purposes, we'll just turn management of the firewall on from my LAN where employees are. So we got X6 set up for on tag, right? And then click on add interface on top and virtual interface. So the zone will be VoIP, if that's a zone I've created before, I've done videos on how to create zones. 
Uh, here, my tag VLAN is on VLAN 99 for VoIP. I want that VLAN to be on X6. I want this to be static IP. In my diagram, I wanted 10, 10, 99. And again, demo purposes. Well, yeah, I'll turn on ping. I My phone won't be able to ping, I don't think. Anyway, um, so I got my VLAN 99 on X6 and IP 10, 10, 99. So that's it. Okay. So see here. X6 V99 for VLAN 99. So the firewall will expect traffic to be tagged on with a VLAN ID 99 on X6. And everything on tag is on X6 will be on 10, 10, 90, right? We got both different subnets here. So first thing I need to do then is set the HTTP. So go into the HTTP, the HTTP scope, click on add dynamic and I'll do it quickly because that's stuff I've already showed before. So X6, so I got my DHCP for X6, 10, 10, 90, and add another one for VLAN 99, 10, 10, 99. And we'll just ensure we do have internet access policy. So VoIP2 when it's working, it has a policy. Again, that's here, you know, it's a video I'm doing on connectivity with the switches, right? And what I've what I've done here to have policies that allow everything, all port wide open, no control whatsoever. I'm strongly against that. But here, it's not a security video on firewalls. It's a basic step by step for the switch. So I just want internet access for things to work. So I do have outbound policies. So I'll be able to reach out to the web and to the VoIP server as well. So we're good. Next, let's go back in my interface. See, I've set X6, but I want a link aggregation on my diagram again, X6 and 7 going through the switch. So we'll edit X6 again, advance. See, redundant aggregate port will do link aggregation with X7. I could pick X8 and more, but you know, here I'll just, two port will be enough and it okay. So now see X6 and VLAN 99 are still there, but X7 is set now as a aggregate port and there's a comment here, aggregate to port X6. So our firewall is set. Next is to set the switch. So let's edit our switch. First, we'll go create our VLAN. So we're back in VLAN because that's where we left off. First, 90 is my LAN. And I do not want anything. Yes, I do want for Wi-Fi, right? I want Wi-Fi. So tag will be port 528, which will be the four access point I will have. And here, the uplink to the firewall in my diagram is um, I will be using that will be my link aggregation. So we're not gonna set those here. We're just gonna set ports where we'll have uh, phones connected. And regarding what I've typed in, it's port 15 to 24. Those are the port where I will have phone connected to. And uh, 13 and 14 will be my link aggregation, which we will set in a minute. Then we'll add my VoIP VLAN. 99 again i will have a voip ssid so because i let's say have uh, wireless voip phone so i will also tag that traffic going to the access point which we will configure in the next video and here again uh whoop, not 99 24 so 15 to uh, 24 it, it save yes my bad here sorry VLAN 90 is my LAN, so 15 to 24 are untagged. And here, my VLAN 99 is going to be tagged for those ports, so 15 to 24, right? Because again, the laptop connects to the phone and the phone connects to the switch. The phone, the, that link between the phone and the switch is going to be untagged for the laptop traffic and tag for VLAN 99 for VoIP. So I need to 
tag everything here. And next is to do my uplink to the firewall, which will be link aggregation. So let's go under link aggregation. I will leave this as default. If you do link aggregation with a uh, with a switch, it will be um, link aggregation, which will be, uh, I believe, called dynamic uh, LACP. Yep, sorry. And you need to match whatever the switch will also using here. So here we'll just leave it by default with the firewall because we go to the firewall. Here with the firewall, you need to pick static. It's static link aggregation. And the port I will be using on the switch to do my link aggregation will be port 13 and 14. Trunk port, you can give it a name if you want. And VLAN, we will not touch it here because we want to tag traffic as well. So the native VLAN is one that we will set, but we also need to set uh, the tag VLAN. So we won't touch VLAN here. So again, leave this by default if you do link aggregation with the firewall. If you do it with the switch, make sure you do something that the switch will match as well, right? I've done it with a Dell switch where I add like three quarters of those things were available on the switch, two or three that the switch has were not available on the Dell switch and Dell switch had a few that were not available on the Sonic wall switch. So make sure you find something that matches both. And if you do it with a switch, you can go with LACP where here the firewall only supports static. And you could put a description in VLAN. Again, I will not put anything here. So let's go into VLAN now. See, we have T1 and T5, do, uh, T8. Those are all my link aggregation groups. See here from 1 to 8. So for untag traffic, my VLAN 8, it will be untag. So let's do T1. So my uplink will be untag for LAN traffic. And my uplink will be tag for T1. So that means on my link aggregation uplink, I will tag traffic for VLAN 99 and on tag will be for VLAN 90. So let's review. I've done everything right because it's not some simple checkbox that are super easy, right? There is, I do have a fair amount of VLAN, right? I've made my life a bit complicated doing that video. So VLAN 90, I have uplink, I have Go, it, those two, the 5 to 8 is for my access point. It's going to be tagged. That's all right. Untag 15 to 24. That's for LAN and my uh, trunk. My Not my trunk. Sorry. My link aggregation uplink. And VLAN 99 for VoIP. Again, 5 to 8. That's for the access points. 15 to 24 will be VoIP phones. And my uplink to the firewall. So we're good. Let's hit save on this. And now let's go on the firewall and connect cables. So remember my uplink were 13 and 14. That was my link aggregation and it was on port six and seven. So port six and port seven. Here we do have a phone, a beat up phone. So it will be C in the back here. We do have LAN and PC. So let's take my laptop and connect on PC. So that's my untagged traffic coming into the phone. And that's the uplink for the phone going to the network where it will send untagged traffic from the yellow cable and it will add its VoIP traffic tag on this port. And let's connect that to port, let's say 22. So phone is booting. It will eventually boot and tell us uh, what IP it got. Of course, the phone is already preset with the right VLAN ID, right? Which I'll show you in a second. So of course it cannot contact a boot server. I don't have, I think it's a TFTP server with your VoIP to set up things. I have none of that. So that's expected. Let's see, it got an IP in 10.10.99, so that's a really good start. Next, let's see what IP my laptop received. And my laptop got an IP in 10.10.90, which is exactly what we expected. 
And now let's go uh, play some phone calls and disconnect cable to see that our link aggregation is working. So again, that's traffic from my uh, laptop goes into the phone. Then the phone is connected here. So that is receiving untagged traffic from the laptop and tagged traffic from the phone. And the uplink is here with the same setup of untagged traffic for um, the laptop and tagged traffic for VoIP. It goes through those two cable uplink to here. And of course, the firewall is still set to receive untagged traffic for LAN and tagged traffic for uh, VoIP. So let's try to place a phone call. We got both cables connected, so we should be able to place a phone call. And it works. So let's disconnect one cable and try to place it because here, remember, it's a link aggregation. So it give us more speed, but also redundancy. So here we have one cable disconnect. So redundancy is here and I will, the VoIP call would, should go through this one. Let's call again. And it works. Let's connect this one, remove the other one. So now traffic will not go obviously through this one anymore. We'll go through this one and let's place a call again. And it works. So that conclude that how to, how to get started with the Sonic Wall switch. I hope you liked that video and uh, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on the next video where I will set the four access point av uh, behind me. It's nice. It's the exact. It's in the exact same UI. So you see here devices. I'm into devices switches. There is one access point. There is none. Well, there will be four of them, and we'll set them through SSID policies and other stuff we have here. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.